Hello everyone, welcome back to JLake 3 d So this is gonna be a filter tutorial. We're gonna do some interesting stuff on the way. So go ahead and enter sketch menu and then we're gonna draw a line. Let's make it 10 inches and uh, 2.5 inches, 2.5 inches, 2.5 inches. Mm, let's make it three inches and then just draw a line down here. And then we wanna exit sketch mode, tools, revolve, select our half filter and revolve it around the center axis. Click done. All right, then go and click the front face and we wanna do section view. All right, so what I want now is to make this angle a specific angle instead of here we have like 75 degrees, right? Um, well, first of all, let's go ahead and double click everything and then accept those two things and click lock here on the right. And I wanna draw a line but let me, since we're already here, let me go ahead and show you a little trick. So basically, you know, if you're in the same sketch you draw, it's in the same sketch. But let's say, for example, you go out of your way, you're doing something else, then you come back, you go to the front face, and you have that sketch there, but you draw another sketch. As you can see, it's now in a different plane. You have a new sketch appear here. So what, what tends to happen there is you can't use them together to find that angle, for example. So what I wanna do is actually delete this sketch, go into this sketch menu by clicking it, and then sketch right on top of that. So basically you're now inside of that first sketch, and now we can make a straight line go up here, and now we can easily see our angle is 14.93. And I don't like that angle, so let's go ahead and double click. I'll just click this one and click lock. And then I want to change that angle to let's say 10. And as you can see, it adjusted that sketch there. And it also live adjusted our body to match that first initial sketch because of the history that we now have. All right, so I'm going to show you a couple things along the way here. Uh, but anyways, now that that's done, what I want to do is go to front face again, click that sketch and click lock to get everything in place and then horizontal vertical. That probably wouldn't work because we have that cone shape unless we do double click and then deselect that, then horizontal vertical. That way nothing will shift uh, sideways. All right, and then once we're done with that, I wanna draw a couple of shapes. Let's say uh, a triangle or a hexagon, whatever you're working with. Let's just do triangle for simplicity. Uh, let's make that shape about 0.5 millimeters and I actually wanna move it, but as you double click, you see all these constraints, all these things. You can't really move it. If you try to move it, you're trying to do the whole thing. So what we need to do is delete those constraints here on the left. There's two of them there. And uh, once we have that, now we can double click it all and we can move it anywhere we want, right? But I want it to go down here and get a certain space off the bottom. However, once you get to that point there, you also have to click disconnect because it's connected to that point. Now we have to double click these things click exit sketch mode and then auto selects the move and rotate tool. And I want to align it with this edge and just move it up here by about one inch. All right, and then click mirror on the left here. And let's select this edge right here, click done. Delete that line because it's in the way. And I want to use a pattern tool. So transform pattern, select these lines here. And then I want a linear pattern and align it with our edge there and go up and do spacing of about one. That's not enough, let's do two since we doubled. And uh, for now, this is probably fine. I know it's not ideal, but this is just a tutorial to, to show you the process, right? So click done. And then I wanna actually take that uh, sketch there, just select all of them. And we want to exit sketch mode and rotate those on that same plane by 90 degrees. Yeah, obviously we have an error there. Let's go ahead and undo, see what we have to redo. So I think what we did is we have to double click on those sketches. So double click without moving it, hopefully. 
And this is obviously easier with the pattern tool. Usually if you have a 3D body, it lets you select the whole thing versus here we have the sketches that are combined. But make sure you align it here. Revolve it by 90 degrees. All right, and then let's turn off section view. It's kind of in the way there. And let's hide our body. And now we can go ahead and select those little diamonds and extrude it in. Let's do about one and then extrude out by one as well. So that equals a total of two. All right, once we have this, we can kind of unhide this body, but let's put those three into a folder here on the bottom. That way we can select them faster in the future. All right, go to Tools, Shell. On this object, let's do 0.2 for now. Click Done. And once we have that, we can go ahead and select our little folder. Let's align it with the center. If you go to the edge of the circle, it aligns it with the center. Click Copy. Go over by about 10, should be fine. And I want to deselect copy and go up by about 1.5. That's probably too much. Let's do one. That's as close as we're going to get. And as you can see, the grouping does get tighter at the top and looser on the bottom. That's just because it's a cone shape. So unless you know how to account for the math there, it's going to get looser as it goes lower and lower. So just something to keep in mind. And I also do want to actually select both of these and lower it in Z just a little bit. Let's say, let's do 0.5, just to kind of center it on our stage. All right, after that, we want to select both of these again and click the pattern tool. This time I want a circular pattern. Let's go ahead and align it in the center as well. And we wanna go over 360 degrees, because we want a full circle. And I think something like 14. 16 or let's do 18 that's exactly half of what we need so this looks pretty good I like this shape here click done and then uh, let's go ahead and do the tools subtract and we could just select our cone shape or filter and do the circular pattern from the item menu so we don't have to click each one that would be a nightmare that would be a nightmare um, click done and now we have our little filter. So this is the easiest way to get it done. But as you can see, the grouping does get tighter as you go up. So just something to keep in mind. And if you do know a way to counteract so that we can have equal spacing on everything, please let me know. I would love to learn that. Um, but yeah, this is basically a filter. And you can also do the same process for a sieve. Like let's say if it's a rounded shape, the only thing is instead of doing it around you would be doing it across for the pattern so just something to keep in mind and the cool thing with history as you can obviously tell is history we can actually change things so let's say if we wanted to actually go in and change that sketch so for example we change it a little bit there if we connect them it should technically recalibrate if we can get it there There we go. So everything is a chain reaction with the history. So everything you do makes a difference, right? So we can do a lot of things there and it does save a couple of steps. For example, we can go back to the shell tool. We can do, let's say a 0.15 instead of a two. So nothing too dramatic, but everything within reason is possible. Same thing even with the shell. So if we go back there, we can choose the target faces. So for example, we had the face here on the bottom. We can also select the face at the top, click done, and it does actually do those kinds of things. So anything within reason, you can change. And uh, yeah, you can make a lot of adjustments. Let me know if you have any questions. Hope you guys learned something. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.